there's always going to be people who are going to try to shake your faith and try to minimize the impact of God's holy word and, and want to mock it or ridicule or make you start to question it and go, oh, I didn't know it said that or whatever, which, first of all, shame on you. If you didn't know it said that, read your Bible. Know what it says. If you're going to claim to believe in a book, then, then know what it says. Read it for yourself. So you're not blindsided by someone trying to point out something. Do you know the Bible talks about unicorns? Do you believe in unicorns? Yeah, you know what? I do. I believe they existed. I'm not saying they exist right now, but I believe they existed. And you know what? I don't think it's talking about a rhinoceros. I don't think it's talking about some of the things that, that the modern versions will also try to just, just, you know, put it away as something else. Uh, when we look at, and that's why I, we're going to go through these various references to these creatures, just so that you can get, uh, you know, an understanding of what they, they were like, right? Of what, of what the Bible describes them to be. Now, it's not, you're not going to get a perfectly painted picture of it, but I do think, you know, when you, when you can look at these combined with other historical sources, it's not that hard to figure out what it is. And quite honestly, I don't think the unicorn is, is that far removed from being what you might normally, the first thing that would pop in your head is being a, a unicorn, like a white horse with a long, you know, a, a long horn on its head, uh, something to that effect. I'm not saying that's exactly right and that's exactly the way the creature looked, but I don't think it's that far off from it either. And if you notice, we started off in Job 39. And in Job 39, the first reference you have is a reference of a mule. Then you get the reference of a unicorn, and then later on you get a reference to a horse, all in the same chapter. And then you also have some birds that are referenced. So you've got you know, a peacock, and you've got a couple other things that are referenced. I don't believe that unicorns were, had wings and flew. Uh, I think that's been added or changed uh, in, in some cultures. I don't, I, I don't see any evidence, at least not in the scripture, that points to that aspect of this creature. But... Um, Let's take a look. I'm going to read some different passages for you because the Bible references these things multiple times. And we're starting with the unicorns. The unicorns is actually the, like one of the least mentioned of, the, of what, we're, what I'm talking about here. Well, rainbow is the least mentioned, but that's, that's going to be at the very end of the sermon. We're going to tie in the rainbow and how it applies to everything here. Um, Numbers 32, verse 22. The Bible reads, God brought them out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. And we're going to see this attribute being used multiple times. One of the main purposes of even bringing up a unicorn, where a unicorn is being used as an example of a real strong animal. So it's something that, that's strong and also not easily bound. Numbers 24, verse number 8 reads, God brought him forth out of Egypt. He hath, as it were, the strength of an unicorn. He shall eat up the nations, his enemies and shall break their bones and pierce them through his arrows. Deuteronomy 33, 17 says, His glory is like the firstling of his bullock, and his horns are like the horns of unicorns. With them he shall push the people together to the ends of the earth, and they are the ten thousands of Ephraim, and they are the thousands of Manasseh. Now, before I continue on with some of these references to unicorns, there's a couple times where you see the Bible make a reference to, say, like, a constellation. But when it comes to these various references, to me it doesn't make sense that the Bible is just going to repeatedly refer to a mythological creature that just has no foundation in reality whatsoever to try to associate with everything else, especially when... Every other animal that's being used, even in the context, is real, and there's no doubt about it. There's no question about it, right? I mean, why would you use a bullock and then a unicorn in the same sentence? One of them's mythological and one of them's not. And, and you know, to just try to, to apply, oh, well, that's just a myth throughout all of these references, when in the context of all of these various passages, there's nothing else even closely, remotely could be considered mythological or even uh, figurative, you know, uh, other apart from the side of just saying, you know, figuratively saying that the strength of a unicorn or like the, you know, the horn. It, it's describing something that people already know and, and have an idea of, hey, this is like the strength of a unicorn. Oh, yes, unicorns are real strong, you know, especially um, 
going back. And, and one of the other things that's really interesting, too, and I have this at a later point in my sermon, but I'll bring it up now. The references to dragons and unicorns are all in the Old Testament. You don't find, now, the, with the exception of dragon being used in Revelation, but the, the way that the dragon's used in Revelation, it's like always defi describing Satan and using its symbol uh, um, in a way that's more symbolic, right? in referencing Satan as a dragon. But other than that, like all these other accounts, and we're going to see in Job especially, um, are very descriptive of an actual creature. 